This episode of You Don't Know Jack is brought to you by... Glug Light Beer. Glug Light! Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, and can I play the spoons? I think that'll answer your question. So, let's make this happen. Let's go! Right off the bat, send in the clones. I've started a biotech business in my basement where I'm cloning celebrities, but they've been shrunk to about eight inches tall. If I were to offer a clone of Mila Kunis called Millie Kunis, how much smaller than the original should she be? One-tenth of a Kunis, one-hundredth of a Kunis, one-thousandth of a Kunis, or one-millionth of a Kunis? Not much time left. Could have at least tried. Hell, you might have even come up with this. The prefix milli denotes a factor of one thousandth. <laughs> Millie Kunis would have gotten her start on the TV sitcom That Point Zero Zero Seventy Show. Just a little ditty about two. And now, social app endectomy. Uh oh, let's cut wits lime war. It's time for a tip list test come. Gibberish time. Now keep in mind, the quicker you answer, the more money at stake. Take a look at this gibberish phrase and tell me what common saying it rhymes with. New scar butt? Do tweet. And remember, ignore any punctuation. It's about dietary habits. It's about dietary habits and explains why I'm shaped like a Twinkie. What you eat defines you. Let me just show you a little something here. You are what you eat. Let's see, if I am what I eat and I'm a person, then I've been eating people. I've been eating people! Green has feet on the feet. Take a stab at... Please do not be disturbed. What would a TripAdvisor.com review for the Overlook Hotel look like? The bathroom door had an axe through it. The Ghostbusters wrecked the dining room. The whole place was occupied by dogs. Or the male receptionist was dressed as a woman. Watch the clock. Not even a guess? That's pretty lame. You should have guessed this. The Overlook Hotel is the hotel in the horror movie The Shining, in which Jack Nicholson smashed through the bathroom door with an axe. That movie is such a cliffhanger. I mean, did he ever finish his book? What did his publisher think? It's killing me! Love question four. Pucker up for... My condo's getting a triple bypass. So, I was clearing out my basement the other day, and I found this old fortune cookie under my water heater. I think maybe I was saving it for a special occasion like nuclear war or something. But what the hell? I'm hungry. All righty. All right, let's see what we got. Home is where the heart is. Hmm, so I wonder, because they lack a heart, which of these is the most likely to be homeless? An out-of-work starfish, a down-on-his-luck shrimp, an impoverished oyster, or an octopus with a gambling problem? Watch your time! Echnoderms, such as starfish, do not possess a heart. If my fortune is true, I guess that means they don't possess a home either. And here I thought SpongeBob SquarePants was a hilarious cartoon when actually it's a horribly depressing tale of the homeless. Let's make a baby five. Step right up to the jet. Okay, if that's how you want it, here's the clue. Stop, thief! Why did these folks steal? Good luck.
really sucks when somebody steals from you, but it feels really great to steal from somebody else. So I'm kind of on the fence about the whole issue. You don't know Jack! You did it! You scored below zero! You get to spin the loser wheel! Thanks for spinning the loser wheel! See you next time! This episode of You Don't Know Jack, sponsored by... Glug Light Beer. Glug Light! Hey, I'm Cookie, and oh my god, the cat just got on top of the cabinet. Get it down, it's gonna knock the candles off. Okay, let's hit it. Let's go! First, I didn't mean to stir up trouble. Who's looking a GIF horse in the mouth? Someone looking at a graphic image file horse's mouth? Someone looking at a graphic interchange format horse's mouth? Someone looking at a global image fidelity horse's mouth? Or someone looking at a geometric interface font horse's mouth? Time is short. Gross horse breath. Ah! Next time, try this. A GIF, you know, like the photo files you can have on your computer, is an acronym for Graphic Interchange Format. So someone would be looking at a photo of a horse's mouth. My favorite photo file of a horse is the mythical JPEG Assist. Try this on for size. Elephant, Mustard, Teddy Roosevelt, or Dracula? Appears in a scene with Bluto in the classic comedy film Animal House. <laughs> Not much time left. Teddy Noseveld. No, no, I'll get this. Pluto, played by John Belushi, takes a jar of mustard and spills it all over his toga during a party scene in Animal House. Yeah, Animal House is a good movie, but it seems like sort of an old school ripoff. And on its way, P90 Extra Large Fries. And this dat will get you fit in 90 days or your money back. I'm going to read off seven things, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a beach body workout program or a cheeseburger from Red Robin. If it's a beach body workout, click here or press one. If it's a Red Robin cheeseburger, click here or press two. Alrighty then, here it comes. Insanity. Turbo fire. Burn in love. Bonsai. Chalene Extreme! One star! Make it a monster! Trust me, you won't want to be displaying that performance on the beach. Let's just say I'm on the seafood diet. If I see food, and it's seafood, and only seafood, then I, I eat that food. I only eat seafood. Love question Next up, Simone Says. If instead of playing a game of Simon Says, you play a game of Simone Bolivar Says, what might you hear? Simone Says, free Scotland from the British. Simone Says, free France from the Germans. Simone Says, free India from the British. Or Simone Says, free Latin America from the Spaniards. Time's a-wasting. 
Apparently you've never heard of giving it that old college try. This would have been a nice choice. Simón Bolívar was a Venezuelan military leader who was instrumental in freeing Latin America from Spanish rule. And he could have done it a tad earlier, but he first spent five hilarious minutes of Simón Bolívar says making people rub their butts. Let's make a baby five. Welcome to the attack. Well, don't mind me then. Here's your clue. Artificially flavored sentience. What's the official artificial intelligence? Good luck. Second place. In my opinion, artificial intelligence doesn't just apply to robots or computers. It exists anytime someone pretends to be an expert on something they don't know anything about. You know, know-it-all hipsters, politicians, arrogant idiots that think they have the know-how to host a trivia show. Hmm. Well, it looks like our writers just took a shot at Alex Trebek out of nowhere. Oh well, I gotta go put on some pants and then iron them. You don't know Jack! This episode of You Don't Know Jack is brought to you by... Glug Light Beer. Glug Light! Hey there, I'm Cookie, and uh, wh what are you doing after the game? Getting pizza? Probably pizza, right? Cool, just assume we're all getting pizza. And so it begins. First question, wake and bacon. What is the most appropriate response to being offered one piece of bacon? I need more than just a hock of bacon. You're only going to offer me sundry bacon? A rasher of bacon isn't nearly enough. Or I'm on a diet, so a slipper of bacon is perfect. Thank you. Watch the clock. <laughs> Now pay attention. A single piece or slice of bacon is often referred to as a rasher, especially in England. Ugh, I shouldn't yell that much. My cholesterol is so high, I could have another heart attack at any time. And that would be my third today. Mmm. Mmm. Bacon. Just a little ditty about you. Here's a good one. Elephant, mustard, Teddy Roosevelt, or Dracula? 
Elephant mustard, Teddy Roosevelt, or Dracula. Holy love! Encountered by six blind men in a John Godfrey Sachs poem. Elephant, mustard, Teddy Roosevelt, or Dracula. <laughs> Watch your clock! Not even a guess? That's pretty lame. You should have guessed this. In the John Godfrey Sachs poem, The Blind Men and the Elephant, six blind men come across an elephant and each have a different impression of it based on what part they're touching. There's also a lesser known version of the story with Teddy Roosevelt. They all think they're touching a shaved grizzly bear. Clean has feet on the feet. I call this one No Country for Mold N. And uh oh, Jess Rudd fits mime sore. It's time for a Nitroclist Restroom. It's gibberish time. Now remember, the less time you take, the more money you can make. Please pay close attention to this gibberish phrase and tell me which popular expression it rhymes with. Won't mold or death. And remember, don't worry about punctuation. There is something you think is going to happen. Uh. Now come on, that's not very ladylike. Ah! Oh, how surprised you're gonna be. Ah! Don't hold your breath, which was the only advice my father ever gave me about sex. Love question for Coming up next, a toothsayer. I'm starting to get the shakes, so that can only mean... Cookie fortune, cookie fortune, quest, cookie fortune, cookie necessary. All right, let's see what we have here. Strike while the iron is hot. Okay, well, when would be the hottest time to attack? During the wool setting, during the nylon setting, during the silk setting, or during the linen setting? <laughs> This is not, not, not right. Ah! Smart people choose this. While all irons can differ slightly in temperature settings, linen is always a hotter setting than wool, nylon, or silk. Which I know all too well on account of owning several shirts made out of curtains. Let's make a baby five. Step right up to the jack attack. Okay, if that's how you want it, here's the clue. Seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Can we get from Melissa McCarthy to Kevin Bacon in seven steps? Good luck.
fifth place. You know how you can sometimes connect an actor to Kevin Bacon in just one step? Just one Kevin Bacon movie? There should be a name for that. It should be called A Rasher of Kevin Bacon. Boom! Callback. You don't know Jack! The fun isn't over yet. You get to spin the fabulous loser wheel. So you don't have to walk away with nothing which you would otherwise deserve. Thanks for spinning the loser wheel. Ta-ta. <laughs> This episode of You Don't Know Jack is brought to you by... Glug Light Beer. Glug Light! Hi, I'm Cookie, and I'm not the host you need or the one you deserve. But I'm the host you're getting right now, so deal with it. Okay, let's hit it. Let's go! Right off the bat... Birds of a feather get angry together. If the play 12 Angry Men were turned into a game app called 12 Angry Birds, what would probably be the premise of the game? Birds attacking pigs in a real estate office? Birds attacking pigs in front of Jesus' disciples? Birds attacking pigs at a football game? Or birds attacking pigs in a courtroom? Time's a wasting. Not even a stab in the dark? Who knows, you might have picked this. The play 12 Angry Men is about 12 jurors debating the innocence of someone accused of murder. The play is pretty crazy, especially when juror 8 shoves juror 9 and he splits into three other jurors. Take a stab at rodent air. And uh oh, mess cut sits my boar. It's time for a play for piss no come. Gibberish time. Now keep in mind, the quicker you answer, the more money at stake. Take a look at this gibberish phrase and tell me what common saying it rhymes with. Mice flies when wish fast. Don't count on a gold medal. If you're polite, you won't come in first. Nice. nice guys finish last. It's true, kind people don't succeed. So look over at the scores on the left side of the screen and know that the person currently in first place is a terrible, terrible person. The queen has feet on the feet. Here's one I like to call bosons. We don't need no stinking bosons. Suppose the protons being accelerated by the Large Hadron Collider at CERN got their passport stamped every time they crossed a nation's border. What would their little booklets say? Welcome to Switzerland, welcome to France. Welcome to Sweden, welcome to Norway. Welcome to Switzerland, welcome to Italy. Or welcome to England, welcome to France. <laughs> Not much time left. Apparently you've never heard of giving it that old college try. This would have been a nice choice. The protons inside the Large Hadron Collider make a 17-mile trip through Switzerland and France just under the speed of light, which would require them to get their passport stamped 11,000 times per second. And every time they go through security, some customs agent tries to fondle their bosons. Love question four. This one's known as Elephant Mustard Teddy Roosevelt or Dracula. Elephant Mustard Teddy Roosevelt or Dracula. Bully, 
Used to measure corn height in the opening number, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning, from the musical Oklahoma. Elephant, mustard, Teddy Roosevelt, or Dracula. Time's almost up. You could have at least tried. Hell, you might have even come up with this. In the opening number, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning, Curly sings that the corn is as high as an elephant's eye. And a little known fact, a last minute edit by Rogers and Hammerstein to this number deleted the lyric, Tomatoes as big as Teddy Roosevelt's nipples. Let's make a baby. Brace yourself for the itch. Okay, if that's how you want it, here's the clue. The waiting is the hardest part. Who or what are these people waiting for? Good luck. Second place. Wait for it. Wait for it. You don't know Jack. Promotional considerations for You Don't Know Jack provided by Glug Light Beer. Glug Light! I am Cookie Masterson, and I think my parrot's memory is fading. What? Hi, I'm Cookie! Something. Something. <laughs> okay, let's get this show on the road. First, Night at the Nude Seam. In the next Night at the Museum movie, what would you expect to hear Ben Stiller scream if Michelangelo's David suddenly came to life? Ah, there's a two foot tall naked man! Ah, there's a five foot tall naked man! Ah, there's a 12 foot tall naked man! Or, ah, there's a 17 foot tall naked man! Watch your time! Oh, honestly. 
Michelangelo's David is a 17-foot-tall nude sculpture of King David holding the sling with which he slew Goliath. And, uh, by the looks of David's junk, it's pretty darn cold in that museum at night. Either that or Michelangelo ran out of marble. Just a little duty about two. Pucker up for the Ebenezer and Floenezer. It's the put the choices into order, then buzz in and see if you are right. And there's some extra tuppence coming your way for a right answer. Arrange these actors in order of when they portrayed Ebenezer Scrooge in a movie from first to most recent. Michael Caine, Jim Carrey, Patrick Stewart. Stewart Caine Carrey, Caine Stewart Carrey, Stewart Carrey Caine, or Caine Carrey Stewart. Watch your clock. Oh, hell, you should have at least tried. You might have even picked this. Michael Caine was Scrooge in 1992's The Muppet Christmas Carol. Patrick Stewart was Scrooge in 1999's The Christmas Carol. And Jim Carrey was the voice of Scrooge in 2009's The Christmas Carol. And oh, Ghost of Christmas movies yet to come. Tell me, what actor will play Scrooge in the future? Justin Bieber. No! It was just a dream. No, it wasn't. It was true. Ah! The queen has been a repeat. Three. Say hello to the Iran Funtra affair. And it's a diss or dat. I'm going to read off seven names, and for each one, tell me if it's a major U.S. political scandal or a Lego building set. If it's a scandal, click here or press 1. If it's a Lego set, click here or press 2. All right, let's get started. The Gatehouse Raid. The Watergate Raid. Dragon Mountain. Imperial Hotel. Teapot Dome. Museum break-in. Turtle lair attack. Oh, just a few tricky dick bricks short. Scandals are a lot like kids' Lego addictions. Both cost taxpayers a lot of money. question Take a stab at... My peanut butter cup runneth over... What is true about Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and actress Reese Witherspoon? Both were born in Louisiana, both were born in 1976, both weigh more today than when they were born, or both were created by someone with the last name of Reese. Time is short. Not even a stab in the dark? Who knows, you might have picked this. In the 1920s, a man named Harry Reese squeezed out his first Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. And in 1976, Betty Reese, now Betty Reese Witherspoon, squeezed out Laura Jean Reese Witherspoon, now just Reese Witherspoon. Both also have produced special Christmas products, Reese's Peanut Butter Trees and the movie Four Christmases. You're going to want to stick with the trees. Let's make a baby. Brace yourself for the attack. Ah, you already know the rules. Off you go. Prof of life. Now might be a good time to profess your love of profs. Good luck.
You won! Sometimes I like to dress up like a professor and do this show. You know, tweed jacket, cardigan, smoking pipe, jockstrap pasties with tassels, and a tight but breathable corset. I don't know how they do it 24-7. You don't know! This episode of You Don't Know Jack is brought to you by... Glug Light Beer. Glug Light! Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, and I am a butt man when it comes to dialing my phone. So why not get started? First on the docket, every country has a Springfield. What would Ned Flanders say if he left the United States and moved to Flanders? Oakley dokley, I'll be in Belgium locally. My new neighborinos are in Finland. Hey diddly ho, it's to Brazil I go. Or, I'm diddly doodly excited about Turkey. Not much time left. Apparently you've never heard of giving it that old college try. This would have been a nice choice. Flanders is a large self-governing region in northern Belgium. I wonder if the residents go back and forth between feeling like they're from Flanders and feeling like they're from Belgium. You know, a classic Belgian waffle. <clears throat> May I introduce Fiber at Last? And it's time to squeeze out a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven names, and for each one, tell me if it's a line of Kashi cereal or an album by music legend Etta James. If it's a Kashi cereal, click here or press 1. If it's Etta James, click here or press 2. Okay, we're off. Heart to heart. Heart of a woman. Blue gardenia. Indigo morning. Good friends. Losers weepers. Time after time. Well, you experienced a lot of stormy weather. Most people know Etta James as the singer of the classic song At Last. But I know her as Cereal Buddies. Yeah, we get together and eat cereal every morning out on my veranda. What? She dead? No! No, I just, I saw her this morning! What? She's been dead for a while? Well, then, who the hell has been eating cereal on my veranda? The queen has been a repeat, free! And on its way, back that gas up. If the noble Queen Elizabeth were to pass gas that resembled a noble gas, what would be true about her flatulence? It would be flammable, it would be odorless, it would be colorful, or it would be highly radioactive. Time to oh, the humanity! Ah! One right answer coming up. The noble gases, like helium and neon, are colorless, odorless gases that do not easily react. It would be nice to have flatulence made of helium, because right now, my gas isn't making these balloons float at all. Question Take a good look at Ticket Lord and Master. I like to collect old ticket stubs, just to feel like I was part of the concert or event. Which of these tickets is most likely to be for the biblical fight between David and Goliath? Row 5, seat 12, Gethsemane Center. Row 300, seat 5, Valley of Ella Arena. Row 76, seat 31, the Absalom Dome. Or row 187, seat 19, Mount Sinai Stadium. Time's a wasting. Could have at least tried. Hell, you might have even come up with this. 
In the Bible, the battle between David and Goliath happens at or near the Valley of Ella. Yeah, I would rather have just stayed home and watched it on Prey Per View. Let's make a baby five. Welcome. Of course, who wants to hear my yapping? No, I'm still doing it. Sorry. Here you go. TV show your support. What does the fan base of these TV shows call themselves? Second place. Personally, I was a huge fan of the show Jag, or as what I like to call ourselves, Jag Offs. Yeah, you could say I'm a huge Jag Off. You don't- 